When we first learn about cells, because of the visualizations that we often see in textbooks, or even some of the, the micrographs we might see from microscopes, we kind of imagine cells as these little uh, balloons of, of fluid with things floating around in them. So this right over here, this is a fairly common textbook visualization of a cross section of the cell. And we see all of these important parts. We see the nucleus. We see the endoplasmic reticulum. We see the, we see the Golgi apparatus. We see mitochondria here. And the way that this is drawn, it looks like they're just floating. It looks like they're just floating in the cytosol. And it is true that there is a lot of water in cells. In fact, you are mostly water. And most of that water that makes up you is found in cells. But it turns out that th these types of drawings are missing a very crucial aspect of the structure of cells. They are missing the cytoskeleton. Cyto cytoskeleton and this is still something that we we are trying to understand better of what how does the cytoskeleton work and how does it help the the, the cell have its structure and move things around and and give it its shape so cytoskeleton it's one word but i've written the different parts of the words and the, the different parts of the word in different colors here because this literally means cell skeleton so if i were to actually try to visualize the cytoskeleton here i have all sorts of these structures we just in a different color. I'd have all sorts of these structures crisscrossing the cell in different ways that have proteins bound to them. And they're even moving and they're growing. And they're, they can help the cell move around, or they can help transport things within the cell. And other things could be lodged in them. And so it's a much, much, much more complex thing that we're talking about than what was depicted in this, in this, in this visualization before I had my chance to, to scribble on it. And to help us visualize it, and I, I, I found this picture. It's a public domain picture. And I found it fascinating because it really helps you think about the complexity that is going on in even one of your cells. So let's look at some of the structures over here. So this, these, this thing that I'm kind of, that I'm kind of tracing, that I'm kind of tracing right over here, this is called a microfilament. This is a microfilament. So let me write that. That's a micro microfilament. And just to get a sense of the scale, its diameter, so this diameter is going to be about 6 or 7 nanometers. So approximately 6 to 7 nanometers. 6 to 7 billionths of a meter. And to have just get a sense of that relative to the cell itself, a typical cell could be it could be six to seven micrometers in diameter or larger. So this is essentially one thousandth of the diameter of the cell. So these these things that I'm drawing right over here, these actually would not be that far off in terms of scale. In fact I'd probably want to draw it even thinner. And that's why you often won't see in these diagrams, because you'd have to draw it you'd have to draw it so thin. The diameter of one of these filaments is one is roughly order of magnitude a thousandth of the diameter of, of, a, of a fairly typical cell. But these things are incredibly important. They help give the structure of the cell. They're made up of, they're made up of actin proteins. So you can see there's kind of these two actin, these two actin, you can kind of visualize them as ropes wrapped around each other. And so this the protein involved here, let me do this, I'm using that color too much. The protein involved in these microfilaments is actin. This is actin. And what's neat about these microfilaments, as I said, they, as I said, they help give structure. They help do all sorts of things. They can actually be dy dynamically uh, kind of destroyed and created. Their lengths can be changed. This can help uh, a cell actually move. And even more, you can use them. You can transport things along them, or you could pull and tug on them. And there's actually a fascinating interaction between actin and what you see over here. This, this right over here, this is made up of myosin. This is myosin. My, let me write this. I know it's hard to see. That is myosin. Myosin. And the relationship with actin myosin, myosin can act as kind of this thing that kicks along the myosin and can, they can move relative to each other. And this is essential for muscles contracting. It's fascinating to see that even things like proteins, which are just made up of a bunch of amino acids, they can interact in these fairly complex ways that you can have, to have these myosin uh, things kick along and move and tug on on the actin. So that's myosin right over there. We see we see ribosomes. These ribosomes are the ribosomes that are not attached to the endoplasmic reticulum. So these are free ribosomes around here. So you can see it's incredibly, incredibly complex. You might say, okay, I see I see these microfilaments made up of made up of actin. I see one, the one I outlined. There's others over here. I see another one right over here. I see one 
up over here. But what are these big, what are these big tube-like structures that we also see? So for example, what is this? What are these tube-like structures? Well, these are called microtubules. So micro microtubules and they look massive compared to the microfilaments but they're still fairly small on a cellular scale this is about 25 nanometers 25 nanometers and once again these play a huge role in the structure of cells and they allow things to be organized and things to be transported and these are also dynamic pieces of the cell they can be constructed and they can be destroyed and they can change the shape of the actual cells and in animal cells the things i've just described are found in most cells but in animal cells you will also find things called intermediate filaments that are actually in in between these two in size which also help maintain shape and do other things so I, the whole point of this video is to just give you even more appreciation hopefully all the other videos we've had on cells have given you appreciation for how much beauty and how much complexity there are in things that a lot of times on an everyday level we think of as something as simple as a cell but there's all this beauty and complexity to its structure that's often not even depicted in the drawings of the cells that you might find in your textbooks and to get a better appreciation here are some public domain images i found of cells where you can see the cytoskeleton actually colored in and what you see in this picture in particular in this yellowish green color those this is actually cow lung cells right over here this yellowish green structure these these yellowish green lines you see those are the microtubules and what you see in this pinkish or orangish color these are the microfilaments so you get a appreciation for how complex and 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 structured these things that you used to think were just big blobs actually are